Good afternoon and welcome to the Return Homestead. My name is Mike and my wife Marty and I homestead 50 acres in southeastern Kentucky. We've been doing a lot of work over the last few months to collect firewood and we're not done. Uh, not only are we collecting firewood today, we're going to do some maintenance on this road. Uh, that maintenance is by taking down some of the more dangerous trees that are already dead. They're just still standing and they're leaning over the road. This tree that's hanging out over the top of the road has got to go. This thing could fall at any minute. It could fall on top of us as we're driving or walking under this tree. So we got to get it down. Uh, it is a beech tree, so we can burn that right away. It's probably fairly well dried. It is not currently well alive. It does have some green branches uh, up top that were still there in the fall, but I don't expect that this is going to grow well in its current condition. So we got to get it on the ground, but we've got some special problems with this tree. Uh, the first is just that it's leaning. So when the tree leans over like this, all of the wood on the bottom side is being compressed. As the tree tries to bend, it's actually squeezing that wood tighter together. And all the wood on the top side of that tree is being pulled apart. So it's trying to stretch that bit of wood out. So you've got compression on one side and tension on the other side. And it's how you deal with the compression and tension that determines whether or not you can cut that tree down safely. So if we don't deal with the compression and the tension correctly, we could crack this tree right up the middle of the trunk. And that would cause the top half of the tree to swing up. If I happen to be standing behind it when that happens, it could be very dangerous. So we wanna take our time, be very careful about how I'm dealing with the compression and the tension to make sure that this thing comes down safely. But that's not the only problem we have with this tree. Take a look over here. So this tree came down probably in 2012. This is right in the area where the tornado came through in 2012. So a lot of these big trees were knocked over at that time. They've been sitting here rotting ever since. This is not something we can burn. It's doing a fairly good job of actually holding the road in place. So we're not worried about moving this giant old log, but this tree is a bit of a problem because the tree we want to take down is leaning right over the top of a Y in this one. So if I cut this one down, all it's going to do is land straight on top of this tree and get stuck. So the first thing I've got to do is get that tree out of the way. And this little smaller tree right next to it also has to go. So I'm going to get the chainsaw out, get busy cutting these two down so we can have a clear path for the big one.
Well, we got it on the ground safely. You can see the hinge is huge. So when the tree is leaning like that, you want to make sure you leave plenty of hinge to control the fall. You don't want it to be wild and crazy and just go slamming down. Uh, so I was careful as I was cutting to listen for the tree to start cracking and snapping. And I could see the curve starting to open up as well as I heard a couple of big cracks. But one thing I noticed when I stepped back was that the tree was also cracking up the center. So you can see this little bit of a fissure right here. So what's happening is the weight of the tree is actually causing the log to split long ways. And it can split most of the way up the trunk. And if it had, then this whole top half of the log would have swung out like it was on a giant rubber band. So I was watching this crack very carefully. That's why once I stepped back and it was so slow to fall, I was hesitant to stick my chainsaw back in there. Um, it can snap off and the tree can actually explode. And you don't want to be standing next to it when that happens. All in all, pretty safe. We got it on the ground. Now it's time to buck it out. This small saw did okay in uh, taking the tree down, but it's definitely not going to cut it for bucking this thing out. I'm going to need the bigger saw. We appreciate you joining us here on the Return Homestead today. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please take a minute to get in there and subscribe. Hit that like button while you're in there so the algorithm knows you enjoyed the video. They'll share it out with more people. We'll see you next time. Thank you.